Hey folks, welcome back to a very special episode of Final Fantasy IX. A very special episode that was brought about by the fact that I uh, forgot uh, to record commentary. Rather, I just messed up my commentary. So here to help me rectify the situation is a very special guest named Zerfall. Hello. Yeah, hey, Zerfall. I thought the best way to uh, make up for the fact that I didn't do commentary on this episode of Final Fantasy IX was to call in Zerfall to help me do post-commentary and also to record it when I'm incredibly tired. <laughs> so those two <laughs> things together should mean uh, excellent content. Now I can't... I'm a crutch. Well, I mean, you're a, you're a, uh, a well-loved and uh, popular crutch. <laughs> you're also you're also recording what I think it might be a more successful uh, Purviews uh, RPG series right now of Samurai Showdown RPG, and all I can say is that if Zidane and friends do encounter like different color coded prostitutes, I do plan on using save states to show all three <laughs> <Zelda>? outcomes. <laughs> hey, fair enough. So I don't know if oh, you're... aren't you like 15 years late for this game or something? I more than 15 years late. We're not going to go into that. <laughs> Oh god, how old am I? How late are you? Uh, no, I think I mentioned in a... Yeah, I had two videos that I'm going to have to redo. One of them, Zerfall is helping re me do post. Another one, I'm just re-recording a, a Grand Theft Auto video. But somebody pointed out my Grand Theft Auto LP. Like, nice LP, dude, but you're five years late, LOL. <laughs> like, Grand Theft Auto V <laughs> is the oldest thing I'm doing on my channel. But we just learned Goblin Punch by eating a goblin. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's how it works in real life, too. Well, I mean, that's, if you, why, that's why goblins are extinct. If you eat, if you if you eat a goblin punch, that's like you just got punched in the mouth. So I don't know if you're following this series, sir, but we have just uh, like deep into disc two, we have just emerged on the second of the game's four continents. We traveled to an underground passage. Uh, which was like this big secret, except it turns out a bunch of like treasure hunters knew about it. But the treasure hunters are hunting for treasures in the underground passage. None of them seem to be interested in what's on the other side of the passage. So we've just emerged, like literally at the end of the last video, we pop out of a tunnel where we have traveled to another continent, mm. uh, which we are now discovering is full of, you know, punching goblins. I'm also spending... It's weird too, because aren't isn't Goblin and Goblin Punch like one of the earlier things normally in these games? Uh, well, there's goblins and imps, and that's true. I there's well, pot swaps and I think in some of them, goblins and imps are the same thing. Like I don't think goblins are a separate enemy in Final Fantasy One, but um... goblins and imps have very different uh, cultures, though. You shouldn't be saying they're the same. Well, I'm not. Well, I mean, I'm just saying they're similar. It's like Spanish and uh, Italian. The languages are similar. They're closer to each other than either of them are to my language, which is what matters. But no, I think I think at this point I'm like being a contrarian. I'm like I'm trying to get uh, Jaxor's uh, riled up by intentionally exploring corners of the world that are not where the story <laughs> wants us to go. Uh, yeah, but there's uh, no Aqua Blast. He is in that uh, that direction. There's none in that direction. No, but this this game, I'm uh, I'm following a fact. It's, see, that's where the game wants us to go. Is that weird structure that is like over that top of where we are now? But this this game, like I don't know if you ever played Final Fantasy IX. It of all the RPGs I've ever played, it was the most human. I mean, it was the <laughs> one that was like all about having stuff that like if you don't go to exactly the right place during the two minute window where it is available. You will never be able to acquire this item or this thing. Like, there's so much shit in this game. And, like, obviously you can play this game without a fact and win the game. But, like, it is just full of little things you don't see. Um, yeah, I remember uh, when I played the game back in the day. I did it without a guide. Yeah. Um, my memory of it isn't the best. For example, I did not remember the chocobos were used in this game. <laughs> but I did beat it at one point. So yeah. I just... I don't have a good memory of it, but I do know that I found out there was a bunch of stuff I was going to miss, and I just made my peace with that and moved on. Oh yeah, no, like if you're several <laughs> hours into the game and you realize you're going to miss shit, you just, you miss shit. But I like, am... I was like, oh, I'm not getting all this blue magic, it's too... Yeah, but for LP... Like the for... first time I ran into a monster that took like an hour to get the blue magic out of it, I was like, no. 
Right. But for LP purposes, like, I don't know about you, and I'm less playing a game, I'm like, I want to try to show most of the stuff, <laughs> you know? Um, this is a game where it's like, yeah, like, I, I need to have a goddamn fact open, or I'm just, I know I'm going to miss a whole bunch of stuff. But uh, I think at this point, I'm looking for, and I find it before it's over, but the reason I'm not just, like, plowing ahead is I'm looking for a place to catch frogs. <laughs> And now, this game, now, I find it kind of interesting, this, uh, the, the remasters that they did for, like, PS4 of Final Fantasy 7, 8, and 9, all have stuff like, you can set in a menu, like, you can turn on and off at any time, zero encounter rate, or, this game in particular is like, you want to just have your party temporarily have max stats, go ahead. Um... So I'm not sure why I'm not turning off the encounter rate at this point, because I just keep encountering goblins. <laughs> I think there might be, like, one interesting enemy that I encountered at the end of the last video that might pop up again and just doesn't. But, uh, no, that's an interesting feature of this game. It's like, hey, you don't feel like actually playing the game? <laughs> we have that covered, too. <laughs> you can have zero encounters and max stats. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, some people, uh, you know, you played through the game... Yeah, you want to play through the story, Back you don't want day, to grind, you yeah. You just want to relive your, your childhood memories without having to... I mean, to be fair, why else do we watch Let's Plays? Well, my childhood memories are of grinding for levels. <laughs> <laughs> this is a game... I really like Final Fantasy IX. Uh, there's a lot of things about it I love. I love the soundtrack of this game. Well, it was like the throwback to the older style yeah. um, stuff before they decided to never talk about it again. Well, they, like, I'm reading about it recently. After I started playing it, I, I kind of read a little bit about it. And, like, you can read these design documents or interviews with the creators, and you can get these really stilted, like, wow, you're really full of yourself, and you thought you had this huge, like, design ethos going on in your crappy little game, like when you read the interviews with the uh, Japanese uh, developers. But in this one, they did pretty clearly, like, yeah, like, they went out of their way to call back stuff from the first game with, like, Vivi the Black Mage, who looks like a black mage, and, um... I hadn't thought about it, but 7 and 8 are both, like... They're both about, like, whiny teenage, uh, pretty boy protagonists in, like, a weird, like, dark future. Whereas this is, like, yeah, you're wandering around in the Middle Ages, and you've got, like, a knight and a wizard, and... You know, whatever the hell Kina is. <laughs> so, it kind of falls apart when you try to figure out what the fuck Kina is, but, uh... Yeah, like, they, they they intentionally made this a throwback game and then proceeded to voice acting times. Like, this is, really is the end of an era for these games. Now, I gotta say, too, uh, when you get back attacked by these things and one of your characters gets hit and they go, Oh my god, I'm being attacked from behind. Mm -hmm. This is terrible. I should turn around. They don't go like, Hey, guys. Everyone else, turn around, in too. in that other direction. <laughs> Well, I, I get the impression that, like, for our, for the benefit of us being able to menu, time is being slowed down. And, in fact, your characters don't spend five minutes staring at the enemy, waiting for the guy to their left <laughs> or right to act. So it might be like Vivi gets hit from behind and immediately turns around, and it takes everyone else a minute to register that something has happened to Vivi. <laughs> What's Vivi doing? Why is he walking backwards <laughs> and swinging his weapon around? All right. I'm glad that that giant, like, electric-powered boar monster was carrying eye drops, too. That's one of those little things that just doesn't strike you as funny until you're talking about the game rather than playing it. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, this huge boar, the size of our entire pa party of four put together, rushed out of the woods, jammed its tusk deep into the guts of our friends, but now that we've defeated it, there's, like, a whole bottle of Visine that was, like, in its pockets. So here we are, we have a swamp ahead, and you know what that means. It means we can catch frogs with our anthropomorphic glutton character. That's that great classic Final Fantasy, uh... All the Final Fantasy games that were worth their salt had a frog-catching minigame with the... Actually, what I remember about this game most of all is that it was like... It was Moogle Palooza. Like, until we got Final Fantasy X-3... Or, um, no, sorry, not X-3, uh, Lightning Returns, 
where there's like a whole town full of these little bastards. Like, never before had a game been like, hey, you know what you want in your life? More Moogles. <laughs> like, for every chocobo that appears, we're going to give you like 10 Moogles, so you can appreciate just how dignified and logical chocobos truly are. See, I thought you were going to be talking about X-2, so that you could be like, once when you get the Moogle suit, that's when it really... That's when the game really opens up, yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, there's a lot of guys out there who are carrying, like, a little uh, nerd torch for Yuna. Depending on how old you were when those games came out, she might be a really special part of, like, you, you know... Uh, it's just be like, oh, I, I really, as a little, little boy playing this game, I just felt funny feelings about Yuna. That Moogle suit, man. <laughs> that's, that's the part. <laughs> Of somebody's really strange transformation into adulthood. <laughs> now, I do have a question here about these frogs. Mm -hmm. um, does it matter if they're male or female or anything, or are you just trying to get as many frogs as you can? No, it does matter if they're male or female. Although I feel like this is a trick. You're trying to get me to. Uh... No, no, I just. You're I trying to get me. You're trying exactly to get me in trouble with like works. the woke mind virus. <laughs> like female frogs can do anything male frogs can do, Zerpo. No, it matters because, like, you, you are catching frogs. This is not, by any stretch, the dumbest mechanic of Final Fantasy IX either. But you catch frogs over the course of the entire game. Uh, you get rewards for passing certain thresholds of frogs. Um, there's an optional boss fight that you only get if you catch 100 frogs. But the frogs, like, if you catch all the frogs that are in the pond, you get, like, uh, you know... Like, ten frogs, and then you don't have any more frogs you can catch. Um, oh, but you gotta leave some there so they can make more frogs. You gotta leave some there so they can make more frogs. I get you, I get you. And that is where the leaving one... Like, I always leave at least three, figuring, like, I'd have to be pretty unlucky for all three to be male or all three to be female. But uh, there's also something called the golden frog. I, I, I may be pausing in the original video to talk about this right now. I don't think so. <laughs> But uh, there's something called the Golden Frog, which I was like, oh, there must be some special bonus for getting that. No, it's like, it counts as one frog. It is neither male nor female, but it somehow increases the um, rate at which new frogs will appear. Because there's multiple places around the world that you can catch frogs, although for a big chunk of the game, you only have access to one of them. But the Golden Frog will appear in one of the four frog catching areas. It will increase the rate at which frogs reappear. So I'm like, well, if it's not actually mating, because it's not my, neither male nor female, apparently this is just a frog that's going around encouraging the other frogs to fuck. <laughs> He's a cheerleader. Yeah, it's like some kind of pimp frog. Which of these three frogs would you like to select? The blue frog? The red This yellow frog? Are you sure? The yellow frog can be rather unrefined and crude. <laughs> She's a very pretty frog, but no, you want the green frog. It wants to be the best frog in Kyoto. <laughs> yeah, it'll be... A, if you're watching all of these things as they go up, uh, you will know what we are talking about in a couple of weeks. Oh, no, it might be next week. I don't know how, how far ahead you are on Samurai Showdown, or uh, Spirits RPG. Oh, no, we only have... We only had one waiting to go, so... Oh, wow, okay. It'll, it'll probably be up uh, well before this. Well, no, this will be up uh, over the weekend. I don't. One of the reasons I had to like, hey, can you help, can you help me do post commentary is because uh, I kind of need to get this going too. <laughs> so this, uh, if you watch all these as they go up, you have only a short time to find out why JG is talking about color coded Japanese prostitutes. Yep. I mean, more than usual. Anyway, yeah, that, I think that was the big adventure. Now. Oh, no, no, we, we are going to... Oh, you are in for a treat, Zerfall. We are going to uh, go treasure hunting on a chocobo, which is... A blue chocobo? A blue chocobo. How did you know? I have no idea. <laughs> How could you possibly have known that from our just test? A, just a good guess. I do like... Don't the... call him if you don't need him. <laughs> yes, I love that. He's got to run in here. <laughs> yes. This game's save mechanic involves a chocobo running... like. Now, bear in mind, we are now on a continent that, like, no one has visited in, other than these goblins. No one has visited this continent in a hundred years or whatever. But this guy just comes booking over the horizon. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, we don't want to see it. He's like, I could have come here any time, but I had no reason to. This place is boring. Oh, it's got a couple of frogs. Although, here's a weird thing that I probably, I almost certainly commented on in the, uh, 
the live commentary that has been lost to the cosmos. That so we went to that uh, we went to that swamp right, and there was like two uh, two uh, Moogles standing around at the entrance. Those two Moogles are. This is the second in-game swamp you encounter. The first one is back on the starting continent, where you know everybody actually lives. It's not like completely empty like this place, which just has electric boars and uh, frogs. So, the, but those same two Moogles are there, and um, there is no explanation provided. For why they are here now, <laughs> they don't. They don't refer to it when you talk to them. Is I guess that a Weezan? Is that a what? A Weezan? Um, no, it was a. It was a tunnel linking two places. Like the Weezan of Kato's didn't go anywhere that I recall. I <laughs> know. Uh, I'll have to go ask Alt. He had a really funny reaction to the Weezan of Kato's when it appeared. <laughs> I have to ask him if he remembers what a Weezand is. So I'm looking for, as you may have gathered, that picture at the top of the screen. Uh, and now that it's going quay instead of quay, yeah, it's we know we're, we know we're close. Yeah, the problem is, um, that's a pretty large area that's on that map, and uh, yeah. It's just like okay, you're you're within like you know because we're on the overworld map. It doesn't care about the direction of the camera, does it? Uh, well, I I kind of thought it maybe it did. I don't think that was the answer. Spoiler alerts: we find it before this is over, <laughs> but it takes a minute. <laughs> we don't even get like a uh, cool uh, chocobo surf music either. That's the real problem. Like, I think Final Fantasy X might be my favorite Final Fantasy, but, like, Final Fantasy Chocobo music, I think, hit its hit its greatest height in eight with the, the Chocobo Surf theme. Yep. Although the Hard Rock uh, Final Fantasy 13-2 Chocobo music was pretty good. Uh, I actually have a, around here a CD that I got from an import shop back in the day. Um... That's the official, like, Final Fantasy Chocobo remix CD. It's just got, like, 80, like, well, not 80. It's got, like, 15 versions of the Chocobo song on it. <laughs> okay. That's I don't, my, I don't know I how. Like, I, like the, I was like, this this is going to be good. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to put these on MP3s and then listen to one out of all of these ever on my uh, iPod. Quake. But, like. How long, like, okay, the Chocobo theme is not that long. Even, like, 15 versions of it doesn't feel like it's enough music to fill a CD. Well, I mean, they've got, like, because they're remixes, they're, like... Oh. oh these are, like, feature fan songs, okay. right? Like, yeah. Mambo to Chocobo. We got a diamond glove there. Which could only, of course, be equipped by a woman because it's a glove. We learned that playing Samurai Spirits RPG earlier in the evening. Ah, when you see that over there, that is what's going to prevent me from advancing the plot for the rest of this video. <laughs> Whatever that was. So this import shop, uh, like if you bought a CD from it, would you be able to install DLC or would you have the wrong version? Um, it was audio. Oh. <laughs> audio DLC. So you wouldn't have to make like a European Zerfalda. Right. Oh, instant encounter, of course. Well, of course. You've been not encountered for a long time. Oh, right. The game is, like, racking up. up how many we're supposed to have had by now. Well, the uh, the enemies have a positive charge, and uh, as you run around in the Chocobo, you uh, build up extra electrons from the feathers. What I like about this is that I found the bio spell kills it in one hit, so our adorable little, like, chibi mage is basically using chemical weapons to destroy this animal. Biological weapons. Oh. Biological chemicals. <laughs> Everything's chemicals if you think about it. All right, yeah. Even emotions. Hey, come on, baby, learn the locomotion. Man, you know, and I, I grew up on Final Fantasy games where ethers were like freaking impossible to get. In this game, I'm constantly tapped out at 99 ethers. I, I should be using spells the way that you use Samurai Showdown uh, attacks. You should be. Now oh, that's an interesting sign. Yep. <laughs> Two eyes and some <laughs> yeah. teeth. This road leads to a dead end. So 
So I believe at this point I am regaling people with stories about how I'm confused and the fact hasn't mentioned this place. I'm not supposed to be here. I wonder what happens if we poke around. And what happens if we All poke right. around is we encounter a huge owl. You encounter a huge owl and you miss out on something somewhere else halfway across the world because right. you came here too early. You know, it's not as bad as Final Fantasy, um, I want to say, 11 had like the best treasure in the game is only available there's like three prior treasure chests that you can't open because if you open any of them you can't get the best treasure in the game but there's no indication when you open those treasure chests that you shouldn't have opened them and it really, it's really yeah it's it's definitely better than uh police quest three as well uh well police quest three was like I, to me, I mean, that's if like you open the wrong treasure chest at the beginning you get to the last boss and they're just like oh you open the wrong treasure chest day eh? game over yeah. And we deleted your saves. <laughs> and uninstalled uh, Police Quest from your computer. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about Police Quest, I will say in defense of Police Quest, which I don't know why I would be defending Police Quest 3. A game the length of Police Quest 3 screws you over, and it's like, oh, well, I guess this is a reason to play through Police Quest 3 again. <laughs> like, it's not like, a, like oh, like Final Fantasy XI, I'm 15 hours into the game and something went wrong where I'll never be able to do the thing on this playthrough. Like, Police Quest Three, you're constantly looking for more excuses to go visit with Juan Runes. <laughs> is he from Three or is he from Two? I get confused. He's, he's from Three. Okay. Three was the last, like, real Police Quest, right? Like, after that, it was, uh... It wasn't uh, Sonny Barnes anymore. Uh, no, that's. I think it's four where he. Oh, I had to uh, pause to give you time Sunny to talk anymore? about this. <laughs> You're like, uh, you probably were in the past going like, oh man, please quest. Please, I had to stop and like, yeah, I don't want people to miss this because I know they're they're listening to Surf Off too closely to be watching the screen right now. I think I literally was like, is this some kind of mini boss? And I opened up the thing as like, no, it's like a regular enemy. I'm like one hit away from defeating it. <laughs> We're one action away from mm -hmm. uh, getting your own answer. It's a real barn burn of a video. I should have just released this without commentary at all. <laughs> it's like choose your own commentary. Yeah. As you're watching this, please. Come up with some good commentary and leave it in the comments. <laughs> hey, scoop art. That's the, uh, that's the, like, um, limit break that is also a, uh, cat litter. <laughs> Look at all that experience we just got. We leveled up Vivi. He's going to be even better at using chemicals slash biologicals to kill stuff. I think it is, yeah, I'm trying to decide, am I going to actually not break anything uh, well, i did turn on no encounters <laughs> so but i'm i it's not so much like am i going to break something by going in here early it's more like am i going to spoil story and like blah blah or maybe this is where i'm actually getting ready to shut down now we got two more videos there two more minutes of vamping so the first four police quest games are about sunny then i think it's the first three and then i think the fourth one is the one that Okay, yeah, the fourth one is, like, there's a weird cross-dressing killer at the end, but, like, you just kind of randomly run into them after spending the whole, like, you spend the whole game investigating and then just, like, kind of randomly walk into where they are without having ever actually solved anything. Is that that one? I think so, yeah. It's oh, okay. the one where um, Daryl F. Gates took over and uh, did his thing that he always does with anything involving police and make it worse. Daryl F. Gates did his thing where he was kind of racist, but didn't really have a whole lot of room for it to appear in that game. I don't know. I'm pretty sure they managed it a bit. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I have to go back and rewatch. Because now, as, as I say that, I'm like, no, he must have found someplace. <laughs> I remember being disappointed that Blue Force was so short. Because it was actually shaping up to be a lot of fun. And then it was just kind of over. Yeah, it definitely it had the the more of the uh, old school police quest feel to yeah. it, and then uh, I never made another one because it didn't uh, have quest in the name, I guess, so people didn't buy yeah. half of it. Yeah. Well, anyway, thanks for joining us on this uh, police quest retrospective, folks. Um, <laughs> we're we're glad. <laughs> you just, how come you had to go all the way around? <laughs> it's like, look, buddy, if you were a Moogle, you would be able to handle that kind of like vertical leap. <laughs> no. 
No, the fun thing for those guys though is um if you if you call them like, you know, ten times in a row and cancel without saving, like he stops coming. Uh <laughs> not like permanently, but for a while. But for a while. Which is That's fun. Pretty good. Uh, but there's also, I read, because I've got the fact, like, if you, there's a, there's a question, like, near the very beginning of the game, where if you, you have to choose the wrong answer, like, 75 times, and if you do, the game advances with, like, a, quote, comic sequence plays, and the game advances without you answering the question correctly, even though you had, like, 70, and I was like, even I <laughs> am not going to do this wrong 75 times. But anyway, thank you, Zerfal, for providing a little, uh, fun and levity. I have been no uh, European JG, except that uh, you will not be seeing this visual on your screen. And uh, when we come back next time, it will be me on my own, unless something goes horribly wrong. Let's hope it doesn't. Oh, and uh, we will be, I think my actual outro was, we will be continuing the story and going to the next place in the story, which I probably talked about a bit, but we were distracted with police quests. So next time, no police quest, more Final Fantasy IX. Bye.